5.4 deals with application. So again, when are we ever going to use this? Most of the questions that we deal with are going to deal with the first equation here. So um, it says the value of appreciation or depreciation. If we recall back to 5.1 notes from Thursday, remember we talked about exponential growth and exponential decay on our graphs? We talked about that? Yep. So this is going to be the same concept, except now we're actually applying it to real-life scenarios. So the equation that we're going to use for most of our word problems is this one right here that you see, where it says V sub n equals P times 1 plus or minus R raised the n. Now, that seems really intimidating. It's not. But let's break it apart. Vn, and I tell you what they all mean, just in case you forget. Vn means the new value. What is the new value you're trying to get to? It's another word for, like, the total. X. Okay? P is going to be the value that you start with. All right, and as we go through this, you're going to know um, the 1 is already there. It just stays as part of the problem. Plus or minus is going to depend on whether we are doing growth or whether we're doing decay. So if it says something is appreciating, we're going to use the plus sign. If it says that something is depreciating, we're going to use the subtraction sign. We will never use plus or minus both. We'll use one or the other. R is the rate at which something is happening. If, if you are not good at converting numbers and percentages to decimals, you take the percentage and divide it by 100, and you're going to get the right decimal every time. So if you are not good at converting to decimals, if you take whatever the percentage is and you divide it by 100, you're going to get the right decimal every time. N is the number of years or months that something is appreciating in value. Okay? Or depreciating. All right, so example number one. According to Indianapolis market trends, the average list price of a home in Indianapolis is $162,000 and is increasing 2.5% annually. If this trend continues, find the average list price of a home in Indianapolis in five years. So the first thing that I would like us to do is to write down our equation. Yes, I know that it is right up there, but I want you to write it down. It says it's increasing 2.5% annually, right? Increasing. <coughs> that means I'm going to be using plus R raised to the N value. Okay, P is the starting value. So what in this problem is the starting value? Any ideas? Excellent, 162,000. And guys, each time it's going to be obvious like that. It's not going to be hidden where you're going to have to figure that out. Okay, um, the next thing we need is our rate. What is our rate here? 2.5. 2.5. But when we plug in our rate, we're actually doing 2.5 divided by 100. Okay, so if you are not super great at that, it's 0 0.025. That's the rate we're going to plug in is 0 0.025. Again, you get that on your calculator if you do 2.5 divided by 100. And then N is number of times or number of years. And if you look at example A, it says how many years? Five. five. So N is five. So now I have everything in my formula except for VN, which is my new value because it's asking me to figure out the new value in five years. So let's go ahead and fill in our formula with what we know. We know our starting value is 162,000. We have our 1 plus our rate, which is 0 0.025, raised to the fifth power. Please don't skip any steps right now, because you're just learning this. So our rate is 0 0.025. We're raising it to the n power, which we said was 5. Does anyone have any questions at this point about why something got plugged in where? So it's appreciating. It's appreciating. So let's go ahead and combine 1 plus 0 0.025. So I'm going to write 162,000. 1.025 raised to the fifth. And we still have our equals Vn on the other side. Now, we're going to rely heavily on our calculators, OK? If I'm going to actually multiply this out, what is my first step? To multiply 162,000 or to raise to the exponent? 
distribute or exponent? Exponent. exponent? exponent, because in PIMDOS, right, order of operations, PIMDOS, multi or expo exponents come before multiplication. So on your calculator, 1.025 raised to the fifth power. 1.025 raised to the fifth power. Okay, you do not need to write that down. You don't need to write that number down. You're going to let your calculator hold it, okay? And then we know we need to multiply that number by 162,000. So just hit times 162,000. It is a big number. Okay, what are you getting, Patrick? Wait, 182,000. 83,000. What? 288 dollars and how much cents? 13 cents. I mean, if you're paying 183,000 dollars for a house, that 13 cents probably isn't going to break you. But you know, you just want to make sure that you budget for that 13 cents. Okay. So let's think about what this is saying. The price of the home in five years will be worth $183,000. That's what that means, okay? So if we are going to work a story problem, that means we answer with what? A sentence, right? So I'm going to write it. So are you. So in five years, the home... will be worth $183,288.13. There are multiple ways you could say this sentence. Okay, you don't have to say it just this one way. All right, any questions about that part? Just plugging things in. Okay. All right. Part B says, in how many years will the list price be at 190000 So now they're asking me to use the same information in problem number one, but now we're going to actually find out how many years it'll take for the house to be 190000 So again, let's please write our formula underneath this until we get used to it. We're still adding because we're still talking about the same type of problem. But now, what information did they give me? 190,000. What does the 190,000 represent in my formula? The new value, right? Because it's saying how many years will it be this new value, 190,000. So they're giving me here a VN. But again, up top, I still know the initial value, so let's start filling in. 190,000. My starting value is still 162,000 for my home. Are we solving for Hmm. In this problem, what are we solving for? What did Kyle just say? Did you guys hear? Exponent. Solving for the exponent, right? Because the exponent is how many years, right? So in this case, we're solving for the exponent. Um, when we do our parentheses, let's go ahead and just already add the 1 and the 0.025 because we know that that makes 1.025. And then we're going to put our in up there in our exponent. So this process goes a little bit different when you're solving for the exponent. So we need to get as many things away from the exponent as we can. What might we move off first? Say it again, Quentin. The 162,000. How are you going to move 162,000 over? Is it? Okay. Every one of you said subtract it. Is it being added? It's being multiplied, right? This is multiplication. So we're going to divide each side by 162,000. Josh, sit up, please. So if we divide by 162,000, I hear some of you using your calculator, but we want to try to be as exact as we can. So we're going to leave this as a fraction. However, we are allowed to knock off zeros. Do you guys remember that trick? You can knock off some zeros. 
So this becomes 190 over 162 equals 1.025 raised to the n. Everyone okay with that? Now this is where we use the methods that we've already talked about in this unit. If you notice, we started this unit talking about how do you figure out that exponent. We need it to drop down, right? You guys, we need it to drop down. But do you agree that this looks like b to the y equals x? Does that kind of look a little bit like b to the y equals x? Now, it's, it's weird because our x is a big fraction and we've got a big decimal. So if we have uh, b to the y equals x, we're going to change this into, can you guess? We're the other way, but the n on the outside, we're going to change this into log form. Okay, so if I were you, I would label this like I did down here, the x equals b to the y. So that you can easily move it into log form, which I would like for you to do. You change it into log form. This is lesson 5.2. That's why we practiced it. Change it into log form. We've already labeled our x, b, and y. My B value is that 1.025. What's the X value? The 190 over 162. And my Y value is N. Does anyone have questions about how I changed that? Now, it would be great to be able to use our calculator, but what's the problem with using our calculator at this point? Mm, no. Why can't I put log 1.025 in my calculator? Okay, it has to be log 10. And how do we make this become log 10? I wish we had just talked about this. Oh, come on. Last day. Log, that log B over log A. The log B over log A, what was that called? Um, Two extra points. Uh, <laughs> no. Change of formula. Change of base. Change of base. Kyle I mean, gets two extra credit points. Change of base formula. I mean, <laughs> okay. Change of base formula. Guys, remember this from like 15 minutes ago? Nope. When we did log base A of B. Yes. And it changed to log base 10 of B. Over log base 10 of A, do you remember this? Yeah. Okay, so let's change this. Remember, this one's already low, so it's going to drop low, and this one's going to go high. So I should have log base 10 of 190 over 162 divided by log base 10 of 1.025. Now, that seems like a bear, okay, but we're going to put this in our calculator very carefully. So I'm going to pull up my calculator, and I want you to make sure that you are inputting it into your calculator as I am, okay? All right, so we're going to have the log of 190 over 162, Close your parenthesis. Log of 190 divided by 162. You should be doing it on your calculator as well, not just staring at mine. Okay, so we have that. It's important to close your parenthesis because if you don't, you're going to get the wrong answer. Divided by log of 1.025. And mine messed up. So log of 190 divided by 162. Divided by log 1.025. Close your parenthesis and then hit enter. 
6.45, something, something, something? Yes. Okay, so what are we thinking? Think about what we're solving for. Don't yell it out. Read your question on part B. Says in how many years? So does it make sense in about six and a half years? Okay, if it said like 72 years, then we would know that something was a little off. That would sound weird, okay? So we are going to say... Now, here's the thing. I don't care whether you say 6.45 in your answer or you say approximately 6, but your work needs to be here so that when I go to grade it, I see that you actually have the right answer. You just worded it differently in your answer. So the way I would word this is, in approximately... Six and a half. Okay, if you don't want to say six and a half, if you would like to say 6.45, that's fine. Years. The house will be worth 190,000. Or 190K, whatever. Now, if you just say in six years, I'm going to take off some points because six and a half is different than six, right? So be as close as you can. Any questions on part B? Okay, let's go on and set up number two. Zach bought a new car. Valued at 21500 What do you think this is in our formula? Is it our new value or is it our starting value? Initial P. It's our initial, right? So this is my P value. The car depreciates. What does that mean we're going to use? Subtraction. Subtraction. Excellent. The car depreciates at a rate of... 1.25%. Again, if you are not strong with your decimals, take 1.25 and divide it by 100. 0 0.0125. There is absolutely no reason for you to get a wrong decimal value because I'm telling you how to make sure you get it right every time. And then it says per what? Per month. Interesting. We haven't had that yet. It's per month. So it's happening 12 times a year, right? 12 times a year this is happening. Okay, so if Zach's auto loan is for four years, how much will the car be worth when he makes his last payment? So this would be like a real-life example. You buy a car for X amount of dollars, and how much is it going to be worth when you finish paying it off? Definitely not as much as you thought it would be. Okay, so we are trying to find our new value. So let's plug in our initial value of 21500 1 minus 0 0.0125. Now, what is our N? Our N is 4. We got to multiply that by the 12 because it's per month. Okay, Justin's reminding us, but we need to multiply that by 12. So it would be in the 48th. 4 times 12, right? Because it's happening for 4 years, but it's happening every month. And 4 times 12 is? 48. 48. Be very careful when you subtract. So when you do 1 minus 0 0.0125 in your calculator, please make sure your decimals are in the right spot. Is it 0.9875 is what you should be getting, I believe. Yep. Anthony, when you go to put this in your calculator, what are you going to do first? Are you going to multiply it times 21,500 or are you going to raise it to 48? Excellent. This goes first in your calculator. So now we're going to rely on our calculators. 0.9875. When you get the right answer, please don't shout it out.
So 0.9875 raised to the 48th power. times 21,500. I'm getting 11,754. Is that what you guys are getting? Yes. Okay, someone put this in a sentence for me. Out loud? Sure. After four years, the car will be worth $11,754. Excellent. After four years. And 91 cents. There you go. The car will be worth... Eleven thousand what? So he bought a car for twenty one thousand dollars and after four years he's losing ten thousand dollars. That would be why we don't buy brand new cars. <laughs> Let me just share that with you. It's not too late to give a car back. Okay, I would like you to try part B on your own. It's like, it's almost identical to part B and number one, where you're going to have to do your change of base. So I will work on it up here, but I want you to try to work on it on your own and see what you can come up with, okay? Set it up at least. Start by writing your formula down. That's a great way to start. Once you get in an exponential form, once you get an exponential form, change it into logarithm form. Should be right there. Don't forget 70. Looks like you still have a zero right there. Okay. I like what I'm seeing.
Once you get it into log form, we're going to change it into the change of base formula. Now we're going to rely on our calculator to help. Remember to do it ever so carefully on your calculator. What did you get when you did that? Five years and ten months. Mm. Wait, where are you getting your answer from? Did you go backwards and do it a different way instead of setting it up? Yeah, it's you. Okay, so <coughs> it's not going to give you the same answer. Interesting. Okay, are we getting, I think most of you are getting 89 something? Yep. yep. We're getting, when we plug this into our calculator, we're getting what? 89.209. 89.209. 204, is that what you said? 2091. 209. Okay, does it make sense? It says, in how many years will the car be valued at that? In 89 years, the car is going to be still worth $7,000? Does that make sense at all? No. no. Anthony, tell us what you did. I divided it by 12. Why? Because it's 12 months in a year. Oh, okay, so it says per month, right? So this is why we make sense of it. Because it said per month, that means we have to take this number and divide it by 12. What happens when you do 89.209 divided by 12? Because it says months. 7.43. 7 that makes a little bit more sense, right? After seven, almost seven and a half years, the car is still worth $7,000. Okay? So we have to pay attention to what we're being asked to do. So let's write our sentence. Whoops. After approximately, because we're going to round, right? So we're going to say seven and a half years. After approximately seven and a half years. If you round, that means you need to use the word approximately. Okay? Um. After approximately seven and a half years, the car will be. Seven thousand dollars. Questions about that? What car did you get? I don't know. Twenty-one thousand Mazda something. Who knows? Okay. Let's do example three. Example three. What did you say? Okay, according to the 2010 census, the fastest growing city in the U.S. is Austin, Texas. In 2011, Austin had a population of 790,390 people. Its population has been growing at a rate of 2.04% per year. Estimate the population in 2021. So the first thing I need to do is to write my formula down. I mean, you can't go wrong there. Okay, because then that reminds you that these are the things that you need to identify in your problem. So we're using VN. Does anyone know whether we're using addition or subtraction? Addition. addition. Why are we using addition? Because it's growing, right? The population is growing. Okay, what is our starting value? Paula, what's our starting value here? Good, 790,390 people. I would say that's my starting value. That's how many people we're starting with. What is my rate value? Colt, what's the rate? 2.04. Okay, 2.04, but we're going to change that into a, a real decimal because it's still a percentage. 0.0204. Good, 0 0.0204. And then what is the in value here? Let's think about what the in value is. Is it 2021? Is that my in value? When was the census taken? Or when did they give me the value? 2010. 
Okay, in 2010, right, it was the fastest growth, but it says in 2011 is when that population existed, right? 11. So how many years have passed since 2011 to 2021? 10. 10. So that's going to be my n value. Okay, so sometimes we have to do a little bit of work to be able to find out what n is. 2021 minus 2011. 10 years. Ten years. Right, so my n value is 10. Okay, why don't you see what you can figure out? This one is not the change of base one. This is just plug numbers in and figure it out. That's the second one. Okay, so plug your numbers in. See what you can figure out. Write your sentence, please, when you get finished. So it becomes this, 1.0204. So remember to do the 1.0204 to the tenth power first, right? Order of operations. Okay, but then that number times this number. And you don't need to write this number down. You can let your calculator hold it. There you go. So then just hit times. 790,390. Elena, what number did you get? Um, 96, 90, 90, sorry, 967,266.03. Did anybody else get this? 967,266.03? I did not. I don't know what I did wrong. You can't have 0.03. Mm, we're going to talk about that. Partially born child. That's awkward. Okay, can you have 0.03 of a person? No. No. For all intents and moral purposes, the answer is no right now. Okay? So... We are talking about people walking around the city of Austin or being strolled around in their stroller. Okay, so right now we're just going to use 967,266. If you are not paying attention and you just put this whole thing down, the answer would be wrong because we're talking about like an unborn child is not going to be counted in the census yet. All right, yes, they are alive and they're existing, but they're not going to be counted in the census yet. All right, so. When you write this answer, you need to cut it off at the decimal point. So it's important that you think about what we're trying to find so that you can make sure you give an, a correct answer. So what would my sentence be? Who have I not called in? Austin. What would my sentence be? In 2021. Yeah, 415. Yeah. What would you say? In 2021. Okay. In 2021. The population will be 9,700. 967,266. Excellent. 967,266. Okay. In 2021, the population will be 967,266 people, whatever. Okay, questions about that one? Those of you that got the wrong answer, did you figure out what happened? No. On your calculator? I don't know what I did. Okay, on your calculator, put it in again. 1.0204. Don't forget any zeros. O's two O four. To the tenth power? Raised to the tenth power times seven hundred ninety thousand three hundred ninety. Seven hundred ninety. Nine sixty seven. 
There you go. All right. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna finish B up, um, and then we'll do the rest of the notes tomorrow. Sorry, it's not the last day. Liar! <laughs> I tried to squeeze it in. I tried to squeeze it in, but I don't want to overwhelm me. Okay. Right. Okay. Part B says, in what year will the population be twice the population in 2011? So it says, in what year, which means we are solving for what here? In what year? Where's my time in my formula? Thank you. It's the N value. So we're solving for N. Everything else is the same. So we're adding population, right? It's increasing. So... Twice the population in 2011. How are we supposed to find twice the population in 2011? Two times. What was the population in 2011? There we go. So to find out what our VN is, it says twice the population in 2011. Well, the 793.90 is what it was in 2011. So if we just multiply that by 2, okay? So everyone multiply that by 2. Someone read it off to me. 1 million. 580, 1,580,780. That's the new value we want. That's twice the value, right? Yep. So then our initial value is 790,390. Our rate has not changed, 1.0204. In is what we don't know, so that's what I'm solving for. Everything else stays the same. If we are going to solve this for n, what do I need to get rid of first? Emily? Okay, how are you going to do that? Excellent. Emily is reminding us that we need to divide by 793.90. Not subtract, but divide by 793.90. Oh, Kyle just asked us. What number do we get when we do 1 million, 1 point, two. divided by that? We get two. 2, right? Because we doubled it to get that number, right? So if we divide by it, we're going to get 2. So in this case, you can just use 2, okay? It's usually going to give us a decimal there, but this case, it's going to give us 2. 2 equals 1.0204 raised to the n power. You take it away from this point. Use your notes on the previous two questions. Part B is exactly like this one. Switch it to that. Yeah. Are you going to give Log. us this formula? Yes, on your test, yes. You do not need to memorize it. You need to know how to use it, but you don't have to memorize it. Okay, so we have our B, we have our Y, we have our X, All right? So we're changing it back into log form. Look back and use your notes if you need to. So this number becomes just two. So that's what we're going to use. Uh, okay. Yes. Looks good. Mm -hmm. You skip the step of putting it into log form, but that's okay. Excellent. Uh, you switch these two around. B, this is your B value, right? Because look, B to the Y. So this is going to be the little number. That's, remember, you have to change it into the change of base, where it's log 10. Right? Do log 10 of 2. 
This is where you change it, log 10 of 2 and log 10 of this one. Because you can't put it into your calculator at this point because that's not base 10. So what do you do with that on over 2,000? You're on to something here. Okay, so Kyle, what did you get for your n value? 34. 34 point what? 32. Okay, so Kyle said, what do we do with that 34.32? Well, remember, it's saying, the question is saying in what year, and we wouldn't say the year 34. That doesn't make sense, right? But it will have been 34 years past, approximately, a little more than 34 years. So if we take 2011, because that's the year that we started with, and we add 34, we're getting 2,045. So in the year 2,045, but we need to approximate because it said 34, a little over 34 years. So sometime within the year of 2,045, after the year has already started, that's when the population will double. So we could say in approximately the year 2,045. The population will double up. So in approximately the year 2045, the population of Austin will double. Would you not be able to move the year you started at? No. No? So this is when we would use this in real life. Okay, talking about population census, talking about a car value, etc. So basically, if you're Mr. Apple. <laughs> Just wait till tomorrow. Okay, we're going to finish the rest of these notes in the next lesson.